All right, another episode, 30 teams, 30 minutes. We're going to do uh, the Houston Rockets today. Uh, definitely hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to grow the channel. Uh, if you like uh, the analysis, definitely leave me a comment. I'm going to answer all comments uh, about uh, my analysis on these teams and then uh, analysis going forward. So uh, definitely rock with me if you like it. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about Houston. Let me go ahead and put 15 minutes on the clock. Somebody called me out that... Uh, I ain't uh, get the, the timing right. So, bam, here we go. So, we talk about Houston. So, it all uh, revolves around um, who they trade James Harden for. Uh, it came out today that James Harden went to a strip club that um, this is the second time that he's had, you know, this run-in with uh, the Rockets and violated uh, the procedures and protocols that the NBA put put forth uh, you had that situation where he came to training camp early, late because he was at little baby's function in Atlanta and he was in Vegas or whatnot so he's he wants to get traded and he's being uh, a malcontent he's doing everything that he can to force him to trade him um, there was a story that came out of the athletic that I didn't read that talked about him throwing basketball at teammates and I think that type of stuff happens but I wouldn't be surprised if he's the one that leaked that to try to just make, you know, all the media and all uh, the focus be on the circus that is the Houston Rockets currently and try to get himself traded. Uh, we've talked on the Sixers podcast about uh, potential trade for Ben Simmons. And I think that that doesn't really make sense. You have John Wall on the team, just structurally for the team. I don't think it really makes sense. You have John Wall on the team already. And that's going to be a hard contract for them to move. Uh, if you pair Ben Simmons and him, you run into a lot of the same problems that uh, befall uh, um, the Sixers previously. There's going to be a lack of spacing. Well, John Wall could have improved his jumper, but you have Boogie, who's a low post maven, uh, Chris Woods, uh, Christian Woods, who um, can stress the, the court and uh, is a very skilled player, but he's someone that wants to get downhill I just the same spacing uh, issues that you arose in Philadelphia are going to arise for Houston and you would think if you're going to bring in a player of James Harden's caliber you want to bring in uh, excuse me of Ben Simmons caliber you want to you know give him the keys you want to put shooting around him and give him the ball and see what he can do and see what his upside truly is and you're not going to see that with John Wall because John Wall is a ball dominant point guard. He passes, he's the ball doesn't stick, he's not a ball stopper, but he is ball dominant. Uh, so uh, that it'll be interesting to see what they actually do. There are some rumors that there's uh, talks about Harden for Pascal Siakam, Harden for uh, Jalen Brown. I think those trans trades make more sense because focusing on the Houston team that I think is going to be there. I actually think that Houston is still a playoff contender. I think what John Wall looked great. And the last time we saw John Wall fully healthy, you know, he was a lot to make it to the postseason every year. You have Bo Boogie Cousins, who's been injured as well, and it's taken some time to come back from his injury. And I thought that he looked fantastic as well. A lot of focus has been on how Kevin Durant has looked post um, injury and how great he's looked. Uh, and, you know, these players don't have the pedigree that Kevin Durant has, but they've looked equally as good. Uh, and they have trained and they, they look slight and they're both hungry. Uh, these are two players that back from the times in Kentucky have wanted to play together. And I won't say that they've been humbled, but they've definitely in a different stage in their career where uh, they are being uh, overthought and overlooked. Um, so um, you put all those things together. Uh, I think that's an ingredient for them to play uh, very inspired basketball and, have a chance to compete out West this year. You a couple that with Christian Woods, who's a shooter, a very skilled big man. A lot of people feel like he's a poor man's Anthony Davis. Uh, you combine that with Boogie's uh, newfound three point shot. You still have Eric Gordon on the team, who's a very talented player. You have PJ Tucker, who's upset, but I don't think that he's going to be unprofessional. That's just not the way that he's built. And I think that he's going to be a very attractive trade target that you could bring another player in. So when you put all these things together, I do I definitely think uh, Houston's a playoff uh, team. I think one of the more 
important and focal points of how good they can actually be if not just being one of these playing teams but a firm six five even four seed it would be how well does this john wall boogie cousins pairing go um i think that john wall um, me personally i thought that he was uh, you know the next pure point guard to ascend and to take the mantle and he's been hurt and dame Lillard has ascended and you know, his name has been kind of dragged through the mud as a player that people I think is peaked. They've often talked about him as the worst contract in the NBA. And I think he's going to have a lot to prove. I think he has a, a, a chip on his shoulder, the size of the Titanic. So I think he's going to come in and dominate. It looks like his jumper has been improved in this time. I remember way back when, uh, when Derek Fisher got hurt for the Lakers and he wasn't much of a shooter then, and then he had a significant knee injury, and he came back, and that's when the Derek Fisher of uh, Lakers fame uh, really came to life. So I wouldn't be surprised if John Wall's jumper uh, in this time off, when you don't have the time, when you practice to be explosive because you're rehabbing both Achilles, that his jumper has improved, and that was always the key to unlocking his game. He's still um, ultra fast, and no one can keep in front of him one of the more downhill centric guards we've seen in NBA history. Um, he's up there with Russell Westbrook and Fox, uh, what's just pure speed uh, pre-injury. And I think that I don't see any reason why from what I've seen in the preseason that he's not gonna return to that form. You have uh, Boogie Cousins, who is another player who was at one time considered the best big man in the NBA. I think that Joel Embiid uh, and Anthony Davis have now taken that mantle, but his low post game is unquestioned. I think he did the offensive punch that he's going to provide them is going to be scary. I believe he's on a one-year deal, so this is still a prove-it thing for him, and I think he's going to come in motivated to score, you know, and, and to dominate the way that he did. So you pair him with Christian Woods, uh, with P.J. Tucker, and – um, Eric Gordon, I think that's a hell of a starting lineup. Um, Eric Gordon is another player who um, just shape-wise, uh, you know, a lot of players in the NBA, and let me pull this up, a lot of players in the NBA, uh, a lot of times I think you can tell a lot from how their bodies look. Um, like I was excited last night when I saw that Andrew Wiggins looked like he gained some weight that he, you know, took the time to uh, focus on his body. Uh, in the off season, I always thought he was a little slight and him being a little bit bigger would help him because I think in uh, essentially his game, he's going to be a downhill player. For him to be a special player, the times that he's really playing well, it's not when he's hitting these jumpers, but when he's really attacking. You know, that's how he started off his career, and that was the hope for a lot of people, that he was going to be this downhill guard, and he's kind of reverted to this uh, jump shooter and missed a lot of jump shots last night. But, you know, it's only one game, but we'll see. But Eric Gordon, he's always had issues, in my personal opinion, with weight. Um, and whenever he's sliding, he's, he's frisky. Uh, you get the player who was once, I think, ascending pre-injury to be, you know, the premier shooting guard in the game. So you have that there. Uh, that's interesting. You still have the remnants of that small ball team and Ben McLemore, who played well for them last year, who shot the ball well for them. When you have a team uh, with John Wall and Boogie, you're going to get a lot of open shots. These guys, you know, can get downhill and calls double teams and calls rotation. So I think that he's going to be a very valuable for, uh, player for them. Uh, their bench, as far as scoring, is a little bit light, but I think you could stagger the minutes of John Wall, Boogie, Christian Wood, Eric Gordon, so you can always have two of them out on the court at all times, and you'll be fine there. Uh, Bruno uh, Cacabolo, I think that's how you pronounce his name, uh, the guy who's famously <laughs> said that <laughs> Fran Fraschilla said that he was two years away from being two years away. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, you know, he's shown some signs of life. He's still a freak uh, physically with that wingspan and his uh, <laughs> athletic ability. That was the fun. That might be, be the all-time 
NBA draft quote. He's two years away from being two years away. Uh, so I'm interested in seeing him. And then Daniel House of uh, Bubble fame. Uh, he's a good player. I think he's a good all-around player. I think he's going to have a chance to grow his game a little bit and show the things that he can do now that he doesn't have to uh, play Harden and Westbrook ball. And no shot on them, but, you know, the game was centered around them driving and kicking to players and players essentially hitting open shots or just driving to the rim to uh, pumping goals and driving to the rim for layups. I think that he's – uh, a little bit more skilled than that. I think he's shown the ability at times to post smaller guards. So um, I think I'm I'm sky high on this Houston team. I just I a lot of people who writing them off for dead. If especially if they make one of those trades and bring Jalen Brown in and bring or bring a um, Pascal Siakam in, then this is that's a good five, man. You could go uh, John Wall, Ben Lacamoire. Pascal Siakam or Jalen Brown, Christian Wood, and Boogie with uh, Eric Gordon scoring off the bench. That's that's a good five, man. That's a good five. I think people are sleeping, sleeping, sleeping on this Houston team. Sleeping. Uh, my most impactful player is John Wall. If he can return to the form that he was, because, you know, he's not an old gut player. He's um he's 30 years old so he's a year younger two years younger excuse me than KD and you know everyone's saying that KD physically looks like he did before if John Wall turns to John Wall of old and he's not an old John Wall uh John Lucas quote if he's the John Wall of old with an improved jumper the sky's the limit for this team this team is uh, uh I think that they're a playoff regardless from what I've seen but if John Wall is John Wall with an improved jumper this team, I think, it has a chance to get a home court advantage spot. Like, I'm that high on this team. I'm that high on this team. Uh, and I think the simpatico nature of him and Boogie together, uh, I, I, I just think that they're going to be a problem. And a lot of people are, they're going to sneak up on a lot of people and punch a lot of people in the face. These players have been hurt for a while, and they're chomping, 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 chomping at the bit. They've been hurt for a while. Uh, they have a lot of uh, people who dislike them in the media for whatever reason. The Colin Carhoes, the Russell, the Ryan Rosillos, uh, Bill Simmons. You know these type of these you know guys that have big uh, speaker phones, microphones, big voices in the NBA media. They've had to hear for two years. Can people continuously piling on them? Two years, you have the worst contract in the NBA. You're untradeable. Two years that even this year, oh, wow, what a steal for Russell Westbrook. Um, I can't believe they got that. I can't believe uh, they got Russell Westbrook for John Wall. John Wall's uh, – even the people that dislike Russell Westbrook, like a Colin Collar, oh, uh, Russell Westbrook is a far superior player than John Wall. So – uh, I think that these guys are going to be motivated, chomping at the bit, and I think they're going to be a problem. Most intriguing player is Christian Wood. You know, he had – he got this contract at three years, I believe three years, $41 million. Uh, Shout out to him. You know, he's had a meteoric rise in this league to now where people are talking about that he's a poor man's Anthony Davis. I don't understand why Detroit let him go. I feel like he's a way better pairing and fit for uh, what they have than Miles uh, uh, Mason Pumley or Miles Mason, I think he's Mason, uh, one of the Pumley brothers. So I wanna see if, uh, I'm gonna meet the myth. I wanna see if this is true. Is this just, are you a one hit wonder, uh, one year wonder and you know, you're know you a solid player or is there a potential all-star in there that's lying in wait that's ready to come out? Um, how old is he? He's 25 years old, so he still has growing and upside. I talk about it often. The NBA is about, um, you know, high pedigree players, but it's often a Steve Nash, a, uh, a Curry, um, a Manu Ginobili, player who comes out of nowhere. Uh, and people think they understand what they are, but they got uh, two, three, four leaps in them. So, is it, you know, he might be one of those players. If I had to assemble a list of one of these uh, Zach Lowe has the Luke Walton All-Stars. So mines would be like the Steve Nash, Steph Curry MVPs. If I had to um, put a list together of one of them, I would probably put him on their list. I, I mean, 
who knows what he can do with another full season with spacing um, without so much focus on him where he could play freely one-on-one. Um, he's not the best shooter on the team. He was the best shooter on Detroit last year um, for most of the season. So um, he's definitely the most intriguing player. Uh, as far as their playoff and regular season potential, I got set up top. I think they could be uh, at least uh, – I think they're firmly a top six seed. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that. But if John Wall has improved his jumper, if John Wall – is a John Wall of old instead of an old John Wall. Um, I think they could be a top four seed um, and have home court advantage in the Western Conference. I'm that bullish on them. I think this roster is stacked, especially um, if they can get a return for John, uh, for James Harden. Uh, that is one of those two players that I talked about, Pascal Siakam and Jalen Brown. I just think the fit just becomes really clunky if you bring in Ben Simmons, unless you're going to trade Ben Simmons somewhere else, you know, because that was uh, something that I heard, I believe it was, uh, I think it was Zach Lowe's podcast. And they mentioned like, if you're going to trade Ben Simmons, why don't you see what's out there? And maybe it's better than James Harden. Uh, You know, James Harden is a great player. I mean, I think James Harden, um, like I was thinking about this the other day, James Harden and Kevin Durant, if you remove Kevin Durant's uh, Warriors time, his Warriors stint, they're essentially the same player. Uh, they're essentially the same player. And, you know, people talk about Kevin Durant as a top 10 player of all time. Uh, to me, essentially, they're the same player. Obviously, they don't play the same. There's different strengths and weaknesses from both players. But I think if you tabulate it, they're the same player. So I'm not saying that he's not a great player when I'm saying – I wouldn't do this trade if I was Philadelphia. What I'm saying is he is 31. Um, he likes to get after it. I don't think that – I think that LeBron is the exception, not the rule. I think the same thing is happening in football where, uh, you know, teams like the Steelers and teams like the Saints are holding on to aging quarterbacks. And they might be looking at Tom Brady as a template when I think it's obvious in both cases – that they probably should go in different directions. I think people are saying, oh, well, he's 31. He could three, four years. You don't know that. 31 used to be, 32 used to be the age in which players used to fall off. And, you know, there's been advances in sports science and taking care of your body, but he's someone that's out at the strip club at 4 a.m. You know, and, you know, maybe he is eating tuna um, and kale at the strip club and he has his own personal chef cooking his meal. But, you know, generally what's consumed at the strip club at 4 a.m. is alcohol and chicken wings. I don't think that's conducive to playing well late into your 30s. So if you're going to trade a 24-year-old Ben Simmons for someone who is not going to play well maybe two, three years from now, what are you getting? You know, you're, you know, throwing away a long window. Ben is 24, Joel is 26, I believe. You're throwing away a five, six year window for a one, two year, two year, one or two year window. Why? What's the rush? That's, that's just my personal opinion. But he's still a great player. He can help a lot of teams. So we'll see what happens. So Houston Rockets, 30 teams, 30 minutes. Definitely hit subscribe. We're going to hit all the teams before uh, the season really gets underway today. And like I said, this is going to be a weekly thing. Uh, where I hit every team. I know a lot of teams in this league don't get the love that they deserve. I mean, I think this is one of the more interesting seasons in NBA history where every team has something to bang their, uh, hang their hat on, something that's very intriguing. That's not just for this season, but going long term. So um, I definitely think uh, every team needs the love, and I'm going to give it to them. 30 teams, 30 minutes. Get at me.